Hey friends, it's Len here at 1A Auto. Today I'm working on a 1995 Toyota Corolla. I'm going to show you how to do a front wheel bearing. It's going to be a fairly simple job. I want to be the guy that shows you how to do it. If you need this or any other part, you can always check us out at 1AAuto.com. Thanks. Okay, so one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to raise and support the vehicle a little bit so the majority of the weight's off of the tire. We do want the tire to just barely be touching the ground so it can't spin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up the lug nuts. This vehicle has aftermarket wheels and lug nuts, so um, you know it's going to be different sizes for you, but you should have a 21 millimeter socket, long breaker bar, and all you're going to do is just break them free. You're not going to loosen them right up or take them right out. You don't want to mess up your lug studs or anything or your wheels. Now that we have them all broken free, we'll uh, safely raise the vehicle, we'll make sure that it's uh, safely supported and secure, and then we're going to remove these lug nuts and the wheel. Okay, so we're gonna be doing the wheel bearing on this. So, um, you know, I like to do both sides. But anyway, I just wanna let you listen to what's going on with this wheel bearing so you know what's going on. Um, I'm gonna give it a little spin and we'll see if you can hear it. You hear the growl? Not necessarily the sh -sh -sh from the brakes. I mean, that is what it is, but the actual growl, like the That's even worse with pressure of the vehicle or the weight of the vehicle causing pressure putting weight and uh, pressure on the bearing. Um, so that makes a lot of noise when you're driving down the road. It probably sounds like just, you know, driving. So let's get busy. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take off these lug nuts. I'm gonna uh, take out the first two. The third one that I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna leave in a few threads and then I'll fully remove the last one and I'll show you the reason why when we get to that point. Now I can put down my tool. Hold my wheel, of course, so I'm safe. I'm gonna lower it down safely, and I'll set this aside. Now we get a clear view of what we're doing here. Okay, so I've just got a little bit of penetrant spray. You can use whatever flavor you like. Say flavor, but don't eat it or drink it, please. I'm spraying the upper adjustment bolt areas up here. Okay, this is just where your knuckle gets mounted to the strut. I'm gonna spray the outer tie rod end nut, so that'll come off nice and easy, hopefully. Spray above the tie rod, right in there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and spray the front right here. Get some nice penetrant in there. I'm gonna spray the rotor here, because we're gonna have to take that off, so if this comes off easy, that would be wonderful. we are. Cool. Um, I'll just spray this, but not for this video necessarily, but it's just a good habit to make sure that your bleeder screws come free, just in case someday you ever have to do your brakes. So, we did the lower ball joint nut, we did the outer tie rod end nut, we did both these nuts, did all along here. I didn't have to do anything with the caliper bracket because I can't spray those. I sprayed right here, I sprayed the rotor area where it's going to hopefully seep in, in between the rotor and the Wheel bearing. We'll let that do its thing for a second and we'll move along. Okay, so we've got our cotter pin that holds our outer tire right end nut on. Um, if you have a new one, you can uh, you know, just tear this out of here. If you don't and you're gonna be reusing it, uh, you wanna of course try to get it out without ruining it. We have new cotter pins here, so for me personally, I'm not too worried about it, but that's pretty much what it looks like, you know, Picture it looking a little nicer though. Anyway, now we're gonna remove this nut right here. Let's just see what size it is. 19. This is a castle nut or a slotted nut. The tie rod has a little hole. That's where the cotter pin went through. The nuts have all these slots. So when you tighten it up and you torque it, you're gonna wanna bring it a little bit more or whatever to make it line up with the hole. Um, you never wanna loosen it a little bit to get it lined up. You just wanna give it a little more if you have to. We'll explain that later. Now I'm gonna take my hammer. I'm gonna give this a little bonk right here. Okay, I'm gonna try to break this free. I'm not gonna try to hit the tie rod. I'm not replacing the tie rod here. I don't wanna hit the stud. That's gonna cause an issue. I just wanna hit the knuckle. Safety glasses, hand protection. There 
There it is. Check the threads, looks like it's in good condition. I would say it's reusable. Now we can do this. This is gonna help us out a lot in the long run. Now we're gonna use our 17 millimeter. We're gonna take out this bolt right here. It's a caliper bracket to knuckle bolt. There's one located higher up, right up here. Use what you've got, but it's a 17 millimeter. If you've got an air gun, good for you. If you're dealing with a long ratchet, well, good for you too. If you have a shorter ratchet with a wobble extension and it breaks, well, not so good. There we are. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Now you're gonna want something like this. You can make it out of a coat hanger or whatever you wanna do, but essentially you just wanna hang your caliper off of your strut so it's not hanging from the um, brake hose, okay? So whatever you gotta do to make it so you're not putting any unwanted pressure on your brake hose. We'll remove the rotor. Maybe you had to give it a couple bonks. This one came free pretty easily, so that's nice. Now we have a peak inside here. We can see where the bearing's gonna be. It's located right inside this knuckle right here. It's a press in. This is the backing plate. It's got a whole bunch of uh, peened metal. I'm not too worried about that right now. Let's move along. We're gonna remove this cotter pin. Just use your uh, cutters or whatever you wanna use. I like to use cutters because they seem to grip. Cutter pin. If you don't have a new one, you can uh, reuse this one if, it, if yours looks fairly decent. Generally speaking, it's always a good habit to replace them though if you have access to them. This right here, just a little locking cover. Just gonna grab. Show you what this looks like here. The tie rod has a slotted nut, right? We showed you that. The axle nut doesn't have slots. It has this little, it's like a castle. Um, I can't think of what you'd want to call it, but whatever. A little clip essentially goes over this, locks into where you know the uh, corners are on the nut, locks into these, and then you line up the hole, and that makes it so the cotter pin can go through and lock that nut in so it can't come loose on you. So call it what you want, a little doohickey, thingamajig, um, but keep it, because you're gonna need it. Next, we're gonna remove the, uh, the axle nut. It's a 30 millimeter, okay? To do this, I'm gonna lower the vehicle back down lower, and I'll show you what to do next. So here we are. We brought it down closer to the ground. Got myself a nice long pry bar. I'm just gonna go like this, okay? between the studs of the vehicle. I'm gonna make sure that the bar is sitting flat with the stud. It's not sitting up like a diamond with a point pointing into this. I don't wanna damage the threads. The reason for this though, is so now, when I use my 30 millimeter socket and my long handle um, ratchet, I can try to loosen this to the left counterclockwise and I don't have to worry about this spinning. If you don't have this on there, what's it gonna do when you try to turn it? It's gonna spin. There we are. It's tight. Cool. So we'll take this nut all the way out. Axle nut. There's no washer behind there. It's always good to pay attention in case there's a washer. You don't want it to fall off and lose it. So we'll set this aside. Um, that pushed in nice and easy. If yours doesn't, there's a center punch hole here. Um, you'd want to use a punch of some sort, air chisel, hammer, whatever you've got. Make sure you're going from the center. You don't want to hit those threads, okay? Now we'll get this out of here, we'll bring it back up, and we'll get to work. Now is the time to take off the bolts that hold the knuckle to the strut. When this comes down, it's going to come, you know, this way, obviously, so you want to make sure that it doesn't hurt your face. Um, it could also put a little tug on your axle, so you have to make sure that you already have this pushed through. Um, if it's stuck in there and you let this down, you could separate your axle um, right inside here in the CV joint area or even in there. 
and that could be a real pain to put back together and you might have to get a new axle. So pay special attention to making sure that this axle is pushed through there. I'm gonna use a 15 here. I'm gonna use an 18 on this side. Your vehicle may or may not be different. See if I can get this to break free here. It's already marked. I'm going to use a 19 here and a 19 on this side. Let's see if I can get it to break free. Definitely tight. Just not off of here. Set that aside. Okay. It's your lower bolt. As you can tell, it's thick. Set that aside. Put it with the nut. Those come through from front to back. This one's the adjustment. Let's see if we can get it out of here. There it is. Okay, so here's the adjustment. As you can tell, it's got like a little uh, bump there. Okay, so that's when you turn this, it pushes that bump, which in turn pushes this knuckle in and out. Okay, so we'll set this aside. I'm gonna take my lower bolt. I'm just gonna start it back through here, just so the knuckle can't move around too much on me when I do this. Under here, there's a nut, a nut, and a bolt. We're gonna remove those three, okay? They should all be 17s. If yours is a different size, well, it is what it is. For me, I'm gonna go ahead and remove 17 millimeters. All right, it's the last one. We'll just take it out fully. I'm gonna use my socket to get this out so I don't get my fingers into a pinch point. Set all those aside. Okay. So, got all these out, right? Pretty much all that's holding this in at this point is just this bolt that we started back in. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with a little bit of penetrant spray. I'm gonna hold my knuckle, I'm gonna remove this bolt. Okay. When I let this down, like I told you before, it might try pulling the axle with it. I don't want to pull the axle with it. I want the axle to stay pretty much where it is and the knuckle to come away from it. So if you notice that it's pulling the axle, figure out what to do. Essentially just push the axle through. There we are. We'll lift this up. There's our bearing. So here we go. We've got our knuckle on our workbench. This right here is a seal, okay? It's got the little rubber seal along there. Generally speaking, it's good to replace these. What I'm gonna do, along this seal, there's a little bit of a lip. You have to try to grab onto that. And you gotta try to, you know, get under it and try to bonk it up, okay? Once you get it lifting up a little bit, just stick another, you know, screwdriver or whatever you got in there, pry bar. And just try to twist, 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 pop this out of the way. Hopefully it'll be reusable unless you got a new one. If you got a new one, Good for you. Here we go. Got my safety glasses on, of course. <clears throat> okay, there's that. Okay, so I sprayed the area with some penetrant, and that's gonna hopefully help get this seal out. Anytime that you're taking out a seal like this, you're definitely gonna wanna replace it, okay? So I'm gonna see about getting a seal, but as for now, 
I'm going to continue on with the service and the video. What I'm going to do at this point, try to turn it a little bit, I'm going to stick my pry bar underneath the seal and up against the knuckle right here. I'm going to try to bonk down on my pry bar while holding the knuckle so hopefully it won't move too much on me. And I'm going to try to lift the seal up and out of here. At that point, the seal will be damaged, so you're going to want to replace it. You're also going to watch out for flying debris, okay? The seal might come flying up, the pry bar might come and whack you in the face. Wear your safety glasses, of course, hand protection, and let's give it a try. Give it a little bonk. Bonk. There we are. So there's our seal. As you can tell, it's not reusable. That's the inside spring. We'll set this aside. Right in here is our bearing. We'll grab a rag, try to clean it off a little bit. There we are. So you've got your bearing right there, and right here, see if I can find something to point. Right along here, there's a clamp, okay? Comes around, and then right there. So you're gonna wanna grab some um, clamp pliers, and you're just gonna wanna squeeze that, lift this up and out. All right, got some snap ring pliers. Got my safety glasses on, of course. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to put these little ears into those little ears, squeeze it, and hopefully get this up. You might need something like a magnet or a small screwdriver just to try to get it in there and peen it up. So here we go. Safety glasses on. There we are. We'll set that aside so we can find it later. So here we are. We're over at our press. We've got this set up. I happen to have a rotor sitting around, but essentially what you want to do, I'll take this back off of here and I'll show you. We're going to be pressing up against this center area right here, which is the hub, right? And we want to press the hub out of the knuckle. So the way that I wanted to do it, this backing plate really isn't in the best condition, so I'm not super worried about it. Um, for you, it's your car, it's your prerogative. I mean, this is a 95, so it is what it is. You could even take it off if you want with a couple uh, bolts there. Anyway, I'm gonna try to support it using the bolt heads. I'm gonna go here, there, and over here as support, which is basically holding onto the knuckle. And I'm gonna try to drive this down and out. When it comes out, obviously it's gonna hit the floor, so you're gonna wanna make sure you have your feet clear. You're always gonna wanna make sure you're wearing hand protection and eye protection especially once you get this going. So I'm gonna suit up here. Safety is a number one concern here at 1A Auto. I can't be there to hold your hand, but I can at least mention to you to please be safe. Okay, I've got this lined up. I'm gonna to try to drive that hub right out of the knuckle now at this point, or out of the bearing, I should say. I've got this tightened. I'm sure I don't have to explain to you how to use a, a press. I mean, if you have one, I'm assuming you probably know how to do it. And you also know that when you're applying pressure like this, there's always potential for mishaps where something might slip and shoot out, or um, you know, something might, I don't wanna say, I don't wanna say explode, but something might happen, okay? So just please be safe, all right? Make sure if you have any innocent bystanders around, you don't want any little kids hanging out, watching, seeing what's going on. Everybody stay away, be safe, wear your safety glasses. I'm gonna do this nice and slow. Okay, so I did something as simple as putting a box under there. All I wanted to do is break the fall. You can put whatever you want under there, it's what I had access to. It's coming out nice and easy at this point. There it is. So there we are. Now all we gotta do is get this off of here. Okay, I'll show you how to do that in one minute. So here we go. We're gonna take our inner race out of there. We're gonna put it along in the front side. Being careful for our seal, unless you got a new seal. Just slide it right in there. Now I'm gonna take my press. I put this right here. We're gonna try to get this to ride right along there, okay? Right along the knuckle. Do the best you can. Possible. Okay. 
got that in there. We're gonna take a 36 millimeter socket and we're gonna lower this down first and we're gonna put that in there. Okay, so we've got this set up. Um, a 36 millimeter is about the approximate size of the bearing where we're gonna be pressing the race. I just got a little block here, take up a little space. Okay, got light pressure, safety glasses, hand protection. Just try to make sure everybody's clear, everybody's nice and safe, safety first. If something comes shooting out, you wanna make sure that nobody gets hurt. I'm gonna stand kinda of sideways, just in case. What this should be doing is slowly pressing that bearing out of the knuckle. Nice clean knuckle. And our old bearing. Easy peasy. All right, let's keep rolling. Okay, so I got a cool little setup here. Um, basically, I've got one of these, it's a little smaller. It's um, next to the hub, but squeezed up against where that race is stuck on the hub, okay? So right along here, the sharp edge, that's sitting up against the, the race. You tighten these down, it squeezes, and then it's gonna, when I tighten this up right here, it's gonna draw this up, and I'm gonna press down on this plate right here, okay? When this comes up, hopefully it's gonna pull the race up with it, and take it right off the hub. That's my plan. We're gonna give it a try, and we'll see if it wants to work on camera. So I'm just gonna slide this little spacer in here. Get it snug. Now I'm gonna give this a little blast with my air gun and hopefully draw it up. Um, you could also add a little bit of heat. I might grab the torch. Just see if I can get that race in there nice and warm. I'll probably try that real quick, and then I'm gonna go ahead and press it out. Torch here. I'm gonna try to heat up the race, see if I can get it nice and warm, and then I'm gonna go ahead and try to blast this, hopefully press this um, hub out. That's my plan. So, safety glasses on, obviously. Flame on. Try to heat up the race. All right, let's give it a try. I'm gonna switch my safety glasses real quick. Looks like it's working. Yep. Okay, can only go a little bit further here. I'm gonna grab a different block. Now I'm just gonna readjust this. There we are. I wanna try to press something in between here and here. So here we go again. Safety glasses, of course. Okay, we're bottomed out again. Just add one more piece in there, hopefully we'll be good. Okay, so we've got it the majority of the way off. It's still a little hot, so we're not gonna mess around with it too much. At this point, we're gonna wear some safety glasses, hand protection still, of course. We're gonna use a little air chisel. Just try to blast it right off of there. It's gonna go flying, so make sure everybody's safe and out of the way. Try to hold my bench still. From one side to the other. Cool beans, there's our hub. Okay, so here we are, quick product comparison for you. Over here we have our old bearing out of our 95 Toyota Corolla. Over here we have our brand new quality 1A auto bearing. As you can tell, they're both the exact same. So 
set it up on top of here. It's got the same diameter, same height, same inside hole. This is just a rubber to keep the, uh, the two races together. You can just pop that right out, just so you know. Same exact thing, an exception of this is brand new. So I don't see any reason why this wouldn't be a quality part to put in, so I'm gonna go ahead and install it. If you need this or any other part, you can always check us out at 1AAuto.com. Thanks. Okay, so now this is the time we have the bearing out. Right along here, this is the outer seal, okay? You can take a look at it from the inside as well. If you needed to replace that or you wanted to, you would do that now. You just pop it right out. Just put a little chisel there along the edge, pop it out, and then pop in the new one. For the purpose of this video, I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna set this back onto my pressing unit. Try to get everything situated. We're gonna grab our new bearing. We're gonna set it in here. Here's our brand new quality bearing. When you're pressing this in, you're gonna make sure that you don't press up against this center area. That's very important. If you press against the center area, you're gonna end up messing up your bearing and forcing it apart. You'll have a brand new garbage bearing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use our old bearing. Essentially the race right along here is gonna sit right on the brand new race. So when we're pressing, we're pressing against the outer race of the bearing, not the inner portion. Super important. So you set that in, as flush as it can be, or you know, going straight up and down as much as possible. We'll line this up. All right, now we're gonna grab a plate and then a little adapter. We're gonna go ahead and press this down. So here we go, we've got our press ready. I'm just gonna bring the uh, forcing piston down, apply light pressure, make sure everything's still situated the way it needs to be, lined up as much as possible. And you want to, of course, have the force as close to the center on this as possible. So let's just get this close. It takes a little while because it's a heavy duty press. So it's not about speed, it's more about power. Okay, I would say that's good to go. Safety glasses, hand protection, and off we go. You can see the bearing going down. This is the knuckle, that's the bearing, that's the old bearing. Anyway, new bearing. We want it to be going in nice and slow. Okay, we're getting real close now. We just have to get this bearing so it bottoms out. So right now it's all about feeling it. When I feel like this wants to stop, then I'm probably at the end and we'll check it. We're going to continue with light pressure here. I'm just feeling, waiting for this to stop. Oh, I think that's it right there. Let's pull this off. We'll see if we can see the ring where the uh, snap ring is going to go. I guess I can stop it there just in case. Perfect. You can see the ring, or the groove, I guess. All the way around. All right, cool. Let's grab our snap ring. We've got our snap ring, some snap ring pliers. I'm just gonna try to grab in the rings, or in the uh, little grooves, and give it a little squeeze, and try to slip it down into the groove in the knuckle. Cool. Okay, now I'm just gonna bring it down to its groove. It likes it there, it's happy. It's sitting all the way around inside the groove. If it was sticking out anywhere, you'd wanna make sure that you uh, get it back out and press your bearing in a little further. Now that we have that in, we can move along to the next step. Um, okay, so now it's time to go ahead and start pressing through our hub. That's gonna come through the front side there and it's gonna come through, right? When you press that through from the front, 
to the back. If you're not holding on to this right here, this inner ring, which is the race, you're gonna just press that right out and ruin your bearing. So you just take your old race, put it there, okay? Rest that on something like this so that when you're pressing, you're holding on to this, not onto the knuckle. You don't wanna hold onto the knuckle or the outer race of the bearing. You wanna hold onto the inner race of the bearing. So I'm just gonna set that like that. Get this on there. We'll just get this little piece out of here. This just holds the two races together. Not needed. You can recycle that. Okay, we'll come back over here. We've got our race, the thick end. It's going to sit directly on this one. Just like that. Give it a little spin. That way, there we know we're not resting on the knuckle at all. You do not want to rest on the knuckle. Cool. Just try to get it lined up here best I can. Cool, safety glasses. We've got our hub, make sure it's nice and clean. Looks good. Set it where it's gonna go. We remember that this seal, the rubber seal, was just barely touching up against there. So that's about where we're gonna go again. Like this. Put whatever you've got for a lifter. And maybe you don't even need a lifter. Grab my bar here. We're gonna go nice and slow. Slow and steady wins the race. You can see it pressing down right there. So we're just gonna watch to make sure that this rubber seal, like I said before, comes up just barely touching that hub. Pretty close right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and relieve pressure and I'm going to check it out. If we need to go a little more, we'll go a little more. Okay, so we've got our seal right there going right along the hub. It's not touching. It's not going to wear out that seal. Right back here. Everything looks really good. As you can tell, I didn't bring that through too far. It's not sitting flush with the outer or the, um, sorry, the inner race there. It's still in nice and deep where it's supposed to be. Looks great. I'd say we're clear to put in our seal and we'll move along. So here's our seal. This is the outside of it. It'll pretty much sit like this, right? Inside where this rubber is, there's actually a little spring that sits in there. Looks something like this. This is out of the old one. Um, so when you're installing this, if you don't put any type of, um, you can use something like Vaseline or some sort of paste um, something just basically to hold that spring. So that way there, when you're putting this in here and you're going to drive it in, the spring doesn't go boing and just go wherever it wants. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use a little bit of this silicone paste because it's what I have on hand. Generally speaking, I prefer to use something like Vaseline. See if I can get a little bit more here. You don't necessarily have to pack the whole thing. You just want to make sure that you got it pretty much running along where that spring is. It's just going to help it stay. I mean, it's not under a lot of spring tension or anything. It's just a little spring, but it is what it is. Okay. <clears throat> so now, where this doesn't have a seal around it, it's usually a good habit to wipe it down and put a little bit of um, RTV if you have anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. I'll grab a clean rag and some RTV. And we'll do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use some of this. Uh, it's just RTV sealer. You can use whatever you got for a sealant. It's okay if it's squiggly because I'm gonna squish it all around anyway. Basically, I just need this to help me make sure moisture doesn't get through and to the bearing. I wanna protect that bearing. We're doing all this work to replace it. I don't wanna do it again tomorrow after the next rainstorm. 
we'll just set that down approximately where it needs to go. Okay, now when you drive this down, it's supposed to sit flush with the knuckle. So you can use something like this, just a little, uh, little driver tool, punch, call it what you want. Just try to uh, see if you can get it to set down in there. It's gonna keep walking around. Once you get it started, it should be okay. It's just... Cool. You can clean up your mess if you want, if you're so inclined. Couldn't hurt to at least try to give it a little bit of a wipe. All right, cool beans. If you wanted to, you can go ahead and put this back on there. It's not necessarily necessary for this, unless of course you had ABS on your vehicle. This vehicle doesn't have ABS, so this is actually a useless part. So I'll just set that aside. So we've got this nice and clean. This rubber seal right here is what's gonna uh, rub on the axle, okay? Looks pretty darn good to me. Let's go ahead and install this onto the vehicle. If you have a little copper never sees, couldn't hurt to give the splines on your axle a little spritz. It's gonna help you out in the long run in case you ever have to take your axle back out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and slide the splines of the axle into my wheel bearing hub assembly that I just put together. Try to line up my ball joint studs with the control arm down there while I slide the axle in and get the upper part of the knuckle into the strut. So it's kind of a, you know, a little multi, a little multi excursion there, multitasking. I'm gonna take my lower bolt, I'm just gonna put it through. I'm not gonna tighten it down or anything yet. All that's gonna do is make it so this thing can't fall down give my axle a tug and cause me to have to uh, replace the axle. <laughs> I'd rather not. Although now would be the time. It'd be easy peasy, you just pop it right out, right? Anyway, we've got our bolt and our two nuts. A little rusted, not too bad though. We're gonna go ahead. If you want to use some thread locker, it's your prerogative. You do you, boo-boo. See if I can get it started on here. This one. I'm not gonna tighten anything down until I have all three tightened, or started I mean, sorry. I'm just gonna bottom all three of these out and then we'll torque them down. Okay, bottomed out. Let's go ahead and torque them down. So here we go, 106 foot pounds. I'm gonna see if I can get it on there. Snug. Okay. There we are. Torque, torque, torqued. Let's move along. So we've got our adjustment bolt. We're gonna put it in the hole. We can see our markings. We'll line those up with the markings on there. And let's give it a try. Just shake our knuckle around. Try to get everything lined up. So it's copacetic and happy. We'll just start this on here. There we are. I'm gonna hold this side with my wrench, with my 15 millimeter. You may or may not have this bolt, like I said. Get my socket on there. All I'm gonna do is bottom this out, and then I'm gonna to torque both of these down. Close to lined up as possible. Feels pretty good. Now 
19. Bottom it out. There we are. Cool. Now we can go ahead and torque them down. Okay. So the bottom bolt, Toyota recommends 203 foot pounds. Uh, it's up to you if you want to try to go that, um, you know, that high. But that is the torque specification. Okay. One. This top bolt, it's a smaller, thinner bolt. The recommendation for this particular one, whether yours is different or not, um, is 100. If you have the original bolt, this is actually an aftermarket camber adjustment bolt, you would torque it to the same as the, uh, the lower one. But for me, where I have the aftermarket camber bolt, it's gonna be 100 foot-pounds. Okay, we're gonna go 103 on this one. Like I said, it's aftermarket bolt. If it's not aftermarket and original, you wanna go with the same spec as the lower, okay? There we are. Perfect, let's move along. So we've got that cleaned out. We'll put this on here. Let's grab one of your lug nuts. Um, you could try to put it on as far as you want. Bottom it out if you want so the rotor can't move at all. Or at least put it on a few threads. That's just gonna help prevent the rotor from falling off and possibly hurting you or damaging something. So the rotor can't go anywhere. We've got our caliper with the bracket here. We've got our two caliper bracket bolts. If you wanna use a little thread locker, you can go ahead and do that. Purpose of this video, I'm not gonna worry about it. We'll get this on here. The pads should slide right over the rotor. There we are. Just see about getting our bolts started. We're not gonna fully tighten either of them. We'll get these bolts started before we go ahead and tighten any of them. There we are. Let's go ahead and snug these up and then we'll torque them down. 17 millimeter. Okay, let's grab the torque spec for it. We'll move along. Time to torque these down. We're gonna go 67 foot-pounds with our 17 millimeter socket. Get it on there. There we are. Let's see if we can grab this one up here. Looks like I might need to grab an extension. Let's see. Wrench out of here. Sock it off of there. Torqued, torqued. We can move along. Okay, here we go. Use a little bit of thread locker. You don't necessarily have to. We've got our nut. Get it on here. I've got my little doodad there. I don't remember what we wanted to call it in the beginning. We're just gonna get this bottomed out, and then we're gonna go ahead and do that tie rod end. bottomed out, it's not fully tightened yet, we still have to torque it, but we need to have it down on the ground with the bar, right? We've got our outer tie rod end here. I'm just gonna go ahead and slide it into the knuckle. There we are. We'll grab our nut. Get that onto the tie rod stud. bottom it out, we'll get the torque spec and we'll continue. Let's go ahead and snug this down, 36 foot pounds with our 19 millimeter socket. Feels pretty good. We'll take a peek at it. Check to see.
see if it's lined up. Looks like it's not lined up. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to continue tightening this nut until the slot in the nut lines up with the hole in the stud. So I'm gonna use my 19 millimeter socket, my ratchet. It's very important not to loosen at this point. You don't wanna loosen it, you wanna tighten it to the next hole, okay? Yeah, looking good. Let's grab a new cotter pin, we'll move along. Got our cotter pin, our cutters. It's gonna come from the back side of that hole. You can go from the front side if it's easier for you. Slide it through. And all you need to do is peen it over. Can you go from side to side? Yeah. Can you put one on one side and one on the other? Sure. You do whatever you want. As long as it's peened over, it can't come loose. This nut can't come loose on its own. You can have it however you want. Whatever looks pretty to you, okay? All right, so now all we gotta do, we'll get this torqued up and then we'll get the wheel on. We're gonna torque down our axle nut to 159 foot-pounds with our 30 millimeter socket and our half inch torque wrench. There we are. Get this out of the way. We've got our little doodad there. Brand new cotter pin. Slide it through. Hopefully, you can see it. Cutters. There we are. Pull it down. There we are. Get that bent up. There we are. There's no way this cotter pin will come out on its own. This won't be able to come off and the nut won't be able to loosen. Looks like we're good to go. Let's bring it back up and get the wheel on. Okay, time to get the wheel up on here. We're just gonna grab it, roll it up our leg, lift with our abs, of course. Try not to use our back for stuff if we don't have to. Get a lug nut started on. I don't have to worry about that wheel falling off. Get all these started, then we'll bottom them out, and then we're gonna torque them down. There we are. It's time to go ahead and torque these down. 76 foot pounds. You're gonna go in a crisscross pattern. There we are. I'm just gonna hit it one more time. Perfect. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com, your place for DIY auto repairs, for great parts, great service, and more content.